Dear everyone, uh, dear colleague, uh, friends, everywhere, anywhere, whenever you are, wherever you are, I greet you with all the greeting that you like. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are, whenever you are. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Today, we are going to observe the episode number 26 of Fadfada 5 to 5. We're talking today on a very highly specialized subject. Very highly specialized subject. We talked about it yesterday. And today we are going to repeat it in English. Yesterday was in Arabic. It talks about the different kinds of families that we are dealing with, as well as the need that the organizations, social or humanitarian, should build a humanitarian, no, should build a psychosocial support unit. Should build a psychosocial support unit. Whether it's humanitarian organization or social organization or any other organization. I thank my colleagues, Aya Abu Zainab, as well as Hajar uh, Amir, for helping me of preparing the slideshow. It is on Zoom for anyone today are trying to follow the discussion. You can go to Zoom. The link is on the Facebook uh, advertisement and you can join through Zoom. Because this uh, talk has got a lot of photographs. But later on, we'll be putting all these images to you after we finish, inshallah. The first image is two. One of them is the camps of the Syrian refugees in Lebanon. All the tents, no matter what, are covered with snow. All the tents, no matter what, are covered with snow in the middle of Winter, no much heating, no much facilities, no much blankets for the young children, pregnant women, elderly, sick, and others. And you can see all these distressing images on the social media. It is very distressing because people are dying by the day. Two young children died today. The second image which came to us from Afghanistan. We know that Afghanistan went through a 40 years of war. The first 20 were against the Soviet Union. The second were against the Alliance forces, which ended in August 2021. From August up to now, there's no much humanitarian aid reaching the country. Even the banks are not releasing the money belonging to many humanitarian organizations to spend such money on the poor and the needy people in Afghanistan. The most distressing image was or came on ITV news in UK of a widow with six orphans. Has no income for them. The roof of whatever you call it, house, is leaking badly. She went with the six children to the middle of the market. They were sleeping in the middle of the market, and they are for sale. Our children are for sale. This becomes a reality for the 39 million people who are suffering in Afghanistan because a lot of international organizations cannot work there because of their inability to cash their fund from the local banks because of the bank regulation is not allowing them to do that. Not only that, but certain governments or a lot of governments are not recognized any, any, any government in Afghanistan and trying to help them to stand on their feet. These are the two most distressing images, which you'll find them, and the, later on I put them the link for you, 
later on. And if you want to follow on the Zoom, the link for the Zoom is there. Inshallah, you can follow me. The idea of establishing psychosocial support unit did not start yesterday. Start months ago. Months ago. I've been reviewing my journey over the last 40 years. And I made up my mind, me and some of the colleagues. I learned a lot from the humanitarian worker for Syrian displaced people, and then displaced people in Syria or refugees in Turkey, Lebanon, and uh, Jordan. Also from my colleague as a humanitarian worker working inside Yemen, Iraq, and other places. Still some camps, displacement camps in Iraq, in northwest of Iraq. Discussing the issue of the internally displaced, then the refugees, let me to be firm in my opinion that we need to build a psychosocial support unit in every humanitarian, social, or any other organization. Why? A young man like yourself asked me, why are we in a hospital, in a psychiatric or mental hospital, or are we in a clinic? Why psychosocial support unit? Are we in this, or are we in talking about humanitarian and social organizations? I said, we are talking about humanitarian and social organizations, but we need this unit to be built yesterday, not today. Welcome, Brother Faisal. Because the community that we serve, whether in displacement or became refugees, are being exposed to a lot of problems. A lot of problems, political, security, economical, humanitarian. They're in armed conflict zones, scared. There's poverty, there's unemployment, there's migration, immigration, and many, 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 many problems. Which led this organization, whether it's a social organization or humanitarian organization, to be compelled, to be compelled to deal with this psychological or psychiatric or mental problems or mental trauma. It becomes a compelling duty upon those organizations to establish a psychosocial support unit to meet the needs of the communities benefiting from their services. And at the meantime, it's not fair. And listen to this, my colleague, please. It's not fair to let a non-specialized individual, when she or he is writing, Projects, proposal, concept paper, or program for those people to just cut and paste, put something about psychosocial support. It has to be done by the expert. If you have got somebody expert in program and project management, you have to have somebody expert also as a psychiatrist or social worker in the psychosocial support scheme. It's very unfair that we present their projects through only, through only, through only the project manager or the program manager who is not skillful in understanding the specialism of psychosocial support or the mental trauma. My intention today with you, or for you, was not to classify the different kinds of families. I made them 12, you can make them 15, 20, 30, 40, 50, as much as you want. So this is not my, my cup of tea. My objective today is to look closely at the future 
of the younger generation will be facing all these challenges and experiencing all these difficulties while they are young in displacement or in refugees camps. Who are going to be meeting enormous challenges and obstacles. And in the future, they will become a part of the greater and larger community, locally, nationally, and internationally. And this come back again and again and again made me to be totally convinced to establish this psychosocial support unit inside the relevant organizations. Let me go with you on the different numbers of or the different kinds of families that I mentioned. Number one is the stable and most cohesive family inside the stable society. Stable, cohesive family is the family which is having the two generations of grandparents. The two generations of grand grandparents, older generation, second generation of grandparents, then the generation of the two parents, the father and mother. The stable family will have only one generation of grandparents plus the father and the mother. This is number two. Number three is the stable family who does not have grandparents because grandparents or generations have a protective, become protective layers to the younger children. The family number four is the immigrant family. When we travel, to a different country for economic migration or education, it would be left only to the two parents to be with the children. Number five, the, the, the troubled, divorced, the, the, the divorced family, where the mother is looking after the children or the father is looking after the children, and eventually either of them could marry somebody else as a stepmother or a stepfather. This is number five. Number six, the troubled family of the orphans. When we lose the, the father or the mother or both of them, and the children will be troubled because there is no parents or one parents, and maybe we can lose also the connection with the greater family. Number seven, the displaced family. Displacement means that you are in the same country, but you move from a zone to a zone. This family in displacement might lose the father, the father, the mother, or both of them, or lose some children in displacement. The refugees' families, which a family go from a country to a country. In this movement, as I said again, the family can lose one parent or both parents, some children when they move from a country to a country. Family of street children. You found a lot of children in the street now, in the slum area. This is number 11. Number 12, the family of consultation camps. The family which ha is, 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 happen, uh, is, is having it, is family inside the prisons, detention centers, uh, uh, concentration camps, uh, hostages, and the forcibly dis displaced people disappeared. Forcibly disappeared. Sometimes people are forcibly disappearing. Or the family, when the military, the, the, the armies of the victorious uh, countries enter the capitals or the cities of the defeated countries. 12, 12 countries, sorry, 12, 12, 12, 12 families. But you young people can make them 12, 15, 14, 20, it's entirely up to you. But the heart of the matter here is the need for making or calling for the establishment of psychosocial support unit in each organization.
I mentioned earlier on the stable most cohesive and the stable family, which is where the two grandparents, uh, the two generations of grandparents for both uh, father and mother, or the one of them, is a stable cohesive families. Okay. There's also the second one I mentioned, uh, there's a lot of images here. You can actually uh, look at it through the uh, Zoom link that you have. Lost uh, their grandparents, uh, immigrant family, which I mentioned about it also. Divorced troubled family, which I mentioned about the problem of the stepmother and the stepfather. Uh, troubled family of the orphans, which is the widow with the orphans, or the orphans without widows, with relatives. Uh, family in displacement, I mentioned them as well. The family of refugees in a different country, all these images are there. The family of state children, with the state children, you might find a poor family, mother and father, and they are releasing the children to the street for begging or finding any manual workers. So they will expose them badly to the outside world, to the wild beasts and wolves, human beasts and wolves. The family of children of unknown parentage or the illegitimate children in the care home. These children in the care home, their mothers will be the alternative mother, which could be this, we uh, call it in Arabic, Al-Umm al-Badira, the alternative mother. They might have no relatives. Of course, they will not have any relatives, any friends, another. This is actually the family of the children of unknown origin who were left in the street, in front of a church, in front of a mosque, because they've been abandoned by mother and being put in these care homes. Then concentration camps, families and others, the concentration camps families who have observed it in Bosnia. By the way, when I was talking to you now, when, I, when I'm talking to you now, Bosnia is in a hot plate, on a hot plate, on a hot plate. Expect anything to happen in Bosnia. I hope that the war is not going to break in Bosnia again, to bring the ugly seed of 1992. In 1992, there was concentration camps where they're capturing young girls and women, imprisoning them for months and systematically raping them many times a day till the, child, till the young girls or the young women become pregnant. And when they are five or six months, they used to release them. This is very well documented, very well documented by the terrorist Chetnik who were actually fighting the people of Bosnia for ethnic cleansing. In detention centers and in prisons, we have been hearing a lot of attacks on young girls and women who became pregnant, which was not happening in the, in the past. Also, in the, during the Second World War, when Germany was defeated, about two million or more or less young girls and women were trying to get an advantage to commit suicide because they knew that when the military forces will enter Berlin at the time or any other city, the easiest way is to rape a young girl or a woman. And it happened, unfortunately. And through this, tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of illegitimate children were born. These are the 12 families that I put forward for you to justify my argument of building a psychosocial support unit in the social, the humanitarian, and even any other organization. Let me take you for another journey 
of definitions to clarify what I'm talking about. Clarification, let us consider that every component of the family, like father, mother, uh, auntie, uncle, uh, grandparent, and others, is like a circle or a layer or orbit or domain doing what? Protecting the children inside the family. Each of these are protecting layers or circles or domain or orbit to the children. Grandparent, grandfather is a circle or, or, or layer. Grandmother is a circle or a layer. Father and mother are two circles or layers. The neighborhood of the parents or grandparents are circles or layers. Friends are circle or la circles or layers. Relatives as well, circles and so on. Every layer or circle is a protective and preventive layer against what? Deviation, loss, and doom. Deviation, loss, and doom. Welcome, uh, Sister Tina Abdelbar. Which might affect the children if not present in the family. Any of this protective layer is a, prot uh, is, is a protective layer, but if we lose one of them, we become more vulnerable. Some definitions for you, because today only I'm going to talk about only the different kinds of families. Next, next part, inshallah, of the talk, we'll talk about uh, how many protective layers in each family. Part three, we'll talk about how to build the psychosocial support unit. So my talk is three parts. Today is part one. Later on, maybe next week, when I come back from Kenya, inshallah, I'm traveling on Sunday to Kenya. Make a dua for me uh, that uh, Allah will protect us from Omicron, or Ali Micron, or Mahmoud Micron, or Hassan Micron. Some definitions. What is the definition of the family in my own opinion and my own belief? Family is made out of a male husband and a female wife who are legally married according to the local law to protect every individual in the family, to protect the rights of every individual in the family. If you do not register your family in the government, Offices, there is no protection for the future generation. This is number one. This is the family. What is a stable society means? Because I mentioned about stable society, stable family, cohesive family. The stable society is a society where, where the citizens are enjoying all their political, economical, <clears throat> and social rights. And the state of law and order were given and protected to every citizen. There's a state of law and order. And there's sufficient civil liberty space. Yep, uh, enjoying the political, economical, and social rights. It, uh, it is a state of uh, law and order as well as there's enough space of civil liberty space for every individual inside the society. If any society or any state does not allow you to have this civil liberty space, know for sure that it's a dictatorship or autocratic state. Number three, what is the definition of one parent family? It's well, very well known in the West. Because here there's a free life between male and female outside the marital state uh, uh, space. So the victim of this uh, relationship would be the young girl or the woman, because she will be left with one child, two children, handful of children, sometimes from one individual, a boyfriend, or two individuals or three individuals. 
and so on. And they call the boyfriend a common law husband. Common law husband. This is, you find the mother is left with a handful of children from different individuals. If she is living in a stable state, have, uh, what do you call it, uh, have the facility and give them the social welfare, she will, the state will be looking after the well-being of the children themselves. If not, the children will be lost, unfortunately, because there is no social care for them. Number four, the unstable society. What do you mean by the unstable society? It's opposite the stable society. They are the societies of displacement, refugees, desertification, economic poverty, humanitarian disasters, street children, armed conflicts, and others. These societies are on the move all the time. Anasalan Mukhtabir, unstable society, societies are in displacement, refugees, desertification, economic poverty, humanitarian disasters, street children, and armed conflicts. And more, what I'm saying to all of you, you can make your own definition. Be confident in yourself. Don't keep only relying on one individual. You can make the definition. You can make the classification of the number of families, the different types of families. Could be 12, as I mentioned at the very beginning. Could be more. It's entirely up to you because you might have more experience than myself. Number five, the troubled family of the divorcee, which I mentioned it before as well. And the child, if he would be taken, looked after by the mother and the mother becoming married to a stepfather or the father looking after the children and married to a stepmother, so the children might be living in a very troubled area. The same for the, the orphans as well, who lost one parent or both parents. The displaced family, for all of you, it is uh, families who moved from one geographical location in the country to another the graphical location in the same country. As I mentioned the example yesterday in Arabic, when the 1967 war came in Egypt, people from the Suez Canal line moved from the Suez Canal and from Sinai to Alexandria, to Cairo, and to different air cities. But they're still in the same country. If you look at Yemen, the same, you find a lot of displacement inside Yemen. There's a lot of displacement inside Syria, about 7 million internally displaced people inside Syria. There's still some displacement in Iraq, about at least 2 million in different areas. There's still camps in Mosul, camps nearby the Hook in the north. These are the displacement, the camps of displacement. The refugees, for your knowledge and my knowledge, is when we move from our country, to go to another country, like the Syrians who are living in uh, Lebanon, in Turkey, as well as in uh, Jordan. This is the family of refugees. Street children, as I mentioned them before, they come, have the two parents who are poor, and they can release them to earn some money or to do some begging or to do some any work. Uh, then they come back to them. So they let the children to be exposed to the wolves and the hyena and the beasts, the wild beasts of the road at the age of five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Or the children without parents. I said, I talked about the one parent family before, especially. I remind myself when I came here to UK in 1977, end of 1977, I was in a place called Abrestwith in Wales on the sea. And I went to sea to enjoy the scene. And next to me was, I think, a young, uh, 
young man and young woman. I mean, young by the age of 17, 16, 17, 18, nothing more than that, with a push chair and the baby inside it. And I thought that actually, yeah, okay. I was just uh, busy looking at the beauty of the scene of the sea. All of a sudden, I heard the scream, big scream and cry from the girl. I turned around to where she was. I found that the young man ran away. This is exactly what's happening to premarital sex. Premarital sex, children being born, responsibility lying on the shoulder of the young girls at the age of 16, 17, 18, and 20. This is the end of my introduction today to uh, the classification of the different types of families and the need for having this psychosocial support unit inside the organization, whether it's humanitarian or social or others. Inshallah, part two, we'll talk about the protective layers inside each family to the children. Because our concern when we build the family is to build the future generation. It's not just to have uh, to marry to a handsome man or to marry to a fancy young girl, beautiful. Beauty is in the morality of the individual, in the etiquette and the behavior and the manner of the individual to build the family. This is how I've been brought up to understand. So next part, we'll talk about the protective layers which we should have inside the family. Then the third part will be about the justification of building psycho social support unit. Thank you very much for uh, being with me today. I hope that I managed to introduce my uh, idea to you and we'll see you again, inshallah. I'll be putting the videos for Afghanistan in, in, uh, on my Facebook and later on, I'll put the presentation and the PowerPoint presentation and the talk uh, from the tube, YouTube, so you can see the whole presentation and you can copy it and you can use it. Jazakallah khair. God bless you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.